good to have you on. It's good to chat to you. Um, we're we're going to fly into this, Jeff. We uh, this podcast is very much kind of five minutes, so we, we try to keep it as as uh, yeah, as yeah, quick as possible. Well. Can I start uh, first off with um, you? You're in the the business now, are you? Just by looking at the background, or yeah, I'm in my well, I'm in a small office space in the business. Sorry, a bit quiet because it's kind of busy in the main shop at the moment. Very good. Let me let me just ask you a question on three back to kick it off. Um, for those that don't know the business, uh, can you give me the kind of because it's quite an interesting business, right? You have quite a few things going on there. Can you give me the kind of quick rundown of what you yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're based here in Moy Cullen. Um, like I don't think it was so much of a shop as more of a space, you know, because we're trying to tick a lot of different boxes for a lot of different things especially coffee bar but we also have a huge amount of retail of irish goods and crafts and we also sell organic and natural wines so throughout the course of the year we'll bring through a whole host of different roasters both irish and international and try and show the best of that we'll also at some points be featuring um up to 70 different small irish businesses in the space at any one time and maybe over the course of the year over 150 small irish businesses will be through the shelves wow like so when i was i was having to think about this podcast and obviously just looking at you know yourself and obviously i would know your business you know relatively well as well being from galway um yeah. can i just ask you a point on like so it's it seems like and you mentioned it there about kind of helping in independence and local business and stuff and obviously your business is known for that um when you look at like i suppose you as a as a business owner would you be like you know the typical stereotypical i you know entrepreneur business owner sometimes can be kind of you know greed hungry capitalist type character where what's your view on that you seem to be more kind of socially you know interested than a lot of other people or some other people yeah um like i suppose i've, I've been doing the self-employed thing for a long time i've been doing it since i was 25 so like 16 yeah. years of it behind me now and we've had a bigger business in the past and now that we have a smaller business it gives us more of a chance to control it and do it in a way that we want to and the benefit of smaller businesses is with smaller businesses come smaller costs so you have a bit more leeway the mistakes can can happen and you're not in as much trouble as if it was a big a big animal yeah. of a thing so it gives you a bit of freedom to do what you want and i've always felt that a business should like contribute to an area it needs to improve the place where people are so if you're in business in a, in a village or a town, like you're not just a shop or a restaurant, you're, you're something that's part of the community. So you need to make the place better for people to work, to live, to visit, all those things make a successful business in my mind. So if you can help others along the way, it's definitely a, a positive impact that will bring the business along. And yeah, it might be a little bit harder to make those decisions sometimes and, and not be motivated by you know your desire to make money, but I think there comes a point after working for yourself for so long that you just have to feel like you're happy doing what you're doing and making a positive impact as opposed to just counting the money, you know? Talking about 16 years, is there any standout lesson that you've learned that maybe that along the way that what you've kind of, I suppose, has it uh, stood to you now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, look, especially in the last few years, but always just you have to be so willing to adapt at any moment in time. You can have a plan in mind and you can have a structure that you want for your business or an idea how it's going to run but once once you start to like engage your customers and, and deal with other businesses all that has to be willing to change in any moment's notice so you just never know when something's going to happen that could deeply impact your business so a capacity to be willing to embrace and maybe positively look for change is something that will stand to you because it's it's inevitable in business you, you know no matter how solid your plan is you're not really in control of it there's too many external forces yeah so the likes of COVID say when you were obviously in business when COVID came well how was mm. that uh how was that how, how did you react this was come February March as 2020 when people are talking about this virus coming yeah, yeah um I suppose f for us we have we have family in Asia so we had been watching the news and we'd seen what was coming down the track so we were very hyper aware, but even before it became a thing here, um, we were actually one of the earliest businesses in Galway to close because we knew, I had a feeling we knew what was going to happen in that yeah. regard. Um, but we we were transitioning to online at that time, so we moved fully online and we were able to do a lot of like um, drop off and pick up locally and stuff over the coming months. And we, we changed the model of the business, you know, we transitioned more into 
we were lucky we happened to be in that small Irish med space at the time and we just decided that was something we wanted to support more. So we actively put a shout out for other small Irish businesses to come be stocked in our shelves because people were eager to suddenly support um, and realize that local is very important. And that helped us um, helped us to get a bit more exposure, I suppose, helped us to be more front of mind for people. And also, let's be honest, coffee became the new thing. Yeah. Like coffee became the new pint. It was the... We opened in limited capacity for the first few weeks and then we had to keep extending out our hours because there wasn't really much for do, doing other than going for coffee. So it became an, actually an extremely busy time for us and actually helped us accelerate the business forward probably a couple of years and skip that middle part, you know? Totally. You know, there's obviously a lot of talk at the moment um, online and in the media and stuff about the challenges to running a, a business in general, but also like a food business and VAT, you know, the VAT rate seems to be very topical at the moment. Um, what's your what's your take on that? As you know, as someone as running a business, a food business, what what are the what sort of challenges are you facing? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the VAT thing is obviously huge, um, especially for any business that's primarily based around food. So, restaurants, cafes who are doing large purchases of food and then with, with zero with VAT on them and reselling and, and incurring a much larger percentage because. I think what maybe people externally don't realize is like they, they're like nine to 13 and a half doesn't sound like a lot, but effectively you're collecting one and a half times the VAT that you were previously. Yeah. Um, and that's a massive cash flow management for any business at the end of the month. But it's not just that. I mean, that's the, the current problem, but costs in general are huge, but also, especially in the food industry, we've had a, a crisis with uh, chef shortage and skilled workers for a long time. And it's just not an attractive industry for people to be in. So, I know that for a lot of business owners, finding staff is one of the biggest issues at the moment because you want your staff to be such a valuable part of your business and be committed with you and to be something long term. But it's very hard right now for people to find staff members that um, can commit to them. And I understand that because the public are all facing huge personal costs as well. So to be in an industry where it doesn't generally tend to be well paid is, is difficult. So people are obviously looking for opportunities elsewhere. I think maybe public awareness as well and a sense of understanding of how difficult it is to be a small business owner in Ireland. It's not something that stops and you close the door. It lives in your head all the time. And it's a constant source of pressure and stress for anyone who owns a business. Yeah, very interesting. Can I ask you about, um, so you had a business uh, 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 that closed a couple of years ago, Creve. Um, can, I, can I ask? So about that experience uh, of, I suppose, going through opening it and then closing the business, how was that for you? Yeah, I mean, look, it was obviously a difficult decision to make, but it was the right decision to make. We were lucky that it was a new business and we weren't too deeply entrenched in a scenario where we'd spent a few years there and suddenly costs get out of control and it would have been difficult to close down. It was a funny year, like it was 2022, it was late 2021 when we started it and then it was 2022 when we ran it. And... Um, just the cost of energy alone, because by the time we got through the door, managed to get an electricity contract signed, it was an insane amount. Um, and it hadn't filtered down to public consciousness yet about the price change. Like businesses were seeing and experiencing the reality of the new increase in prices, but that hadn't really happened for the public yet. So it was very hard to realistically price at a level that would be sustainable. So, you know, we assessed and made a decision that we could go further and it could be worse, or we could make a commitment to stopping and being happy with what we achieved. Like the product we had was amazing. We were using stuff that 95% of what we were making in the kitchen came from within 20 kilometers from a local farm, a local bakery. I mean, that's what we wanted to do. And we didn't want to compromise the quality of what we had. So we felt the better decision for us was to stand by what we believed in as a product and, and make the decision not to go forward, you know? Yeah, so like look, look, looking at it from the outside, I actually never made it out there. And I was, I was so annoyed because it was one of the places I always I was saying, like I really want to go to. And it did look, amazing you know like in terms of all the little maybe checkpoints that you might look at in terms of business you know you know visually the interior design was deadly the product looked amazing um it was, so was it just a matter then of like just the, the economic conditions just made it very oh yeah it was yeah. sure costs i mean when you when they get an electric bill in a month that's four times what you're paying in rent it's very easy maths to do wow. you know is, is it something so, you never you'll ever bring back jeff or you would lo like to bring back or uh kitchens are a sticky environment aren't they once you've been in them for a while it's kind of hard to get away from them and i still have obviously and i'm still kind of in some way involved in food like so it's, it's hard to get away from that I, I love the idea but 
then I have to kind of be realistic with myself. I'm in a different place in life. I have young kids and stuff. It's 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 a hard animal to run if you're not committed to it. Like part of the reason we got away from the restaurant industry, which we've been in for nine years, was because of family life. So I like the idea, but maybe maybe not right now. Maybe when things are a bit more uh, realistic to manage, you know. A, ret- a retirement plan or something when the kids grow up. And- yeah, yeah, something like that. Right, yeah. definitely. Jeff, two two final questions for you, and I appreciate your time. Um, just on, on that kind of. Uh, fantasies of you know restaurant the business fantasies is there any business uh that you admire wish you had started or like you know that you would say geez i love that i wouldn't mind having done that yeah i think the one business i'm always massively impressed by is imbibe coffee roasters in dublin i don't know if you're aware of them um but the guys have this model where they just make a fantastic product they're very low-key about it but they also do so much good work as part of it. They're donating percentages of profits to their staff. They're donating percentages of profits to women's aid. They give free coffee to the hospitals in Dublin. They fund the building of footbridges and other stuff back at community level where the growing of the coffee beans happen. And even recently, one of the things that really impressed me the most and was they said, okay, we're at a level of business that we're happy at. Everyone gets paid mm. our staff are happy. We're not going to grow the business anymore. We're not going to take on any more accounts because this is sustainable and this is positive for everyone. And just to be willing to say that at a time like this is is phenomenal. And I've also dealt with them, we've had them on the shelves for maybe four years and I've always been massively impressed by their product. And it just goes to show that if you make a commitment to something, you can have an amazing product without compromising how you, you yourself feel about it and your morals. Like it's 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 amazing really. It's, I respect the hell out of what they do. Totally, love that. I'll have to ch- I actually haven't heard of that about them, but I'll have to check them out. Yeah. Um, I'm up in Dublin in a few days. Uh, what's the, I'll finish up on this one, Jeff. What's the, What's your future? Do you have any plans that you can share with us maybe in the next 12, 24 months with the business? Do you know what? It's not dissimilar to what I spoke about there. We're, we're kind of at a level now. We're almost six years here where we've kind of been deeply ingrained in the community. Like we're having events all the time. Like during the summer, we have a couple of months, a uh, couple of events each month for, for Pride Festival. Uh, at the moment this week, we're taking part in the, the Coffee for Palestine fundraiser which everyone should check out that's happening this week. There's like a hundred shops across the country donating their, some of their sales of coffee every day to a fundraiser. But for us, it's just to continue to be part of the community and to help to support small Irish businesses. So we don't really necessarily have a desire to, to grow much more, but to keep it stable and to keep it at a place where we can keep doing what we like and continue to support the small businesses and be stable in that way. And, and we're very lucky. A lot of our staff have been with us. Some of them are with us for f- over four years. So we have this nice equilibrium that really I'm looking to maintain more than anything else. That's that's my desire is to keep it a, a positive environment for people who work here and for people who come here every day. Hey, Jeff, thanks a million for, um, I appreciate uh, giving me the time. Great shot. No problem at all. Thanks. Lovely. Appreciate having you on. Thanks Take so care. Much, See you again. Bye bye.